Hello everyone. In this project, uh, we will learn three different ways to access IDs of your UI elements from your layout. So for uh, make it simple, we will have only one element text to hello world. And this uh, text to element has ID, uh, text ID. So we will try to access text ID from our layout, for example, uh, to a very simple task to change the, the text content. So yeah, in this case, if you will try to access text ID directly, uh, there will be unknown, unknown identifier. So for this purpose, uh, we have to uh, use in find you by ID. So this is, will be the method one. So method one, uh, using find you by ID. So we will be using uh, find you by ID uh, method, and we access our ID dot text ID directly and we need to do conversion here to uh, text you. So in this case importing statement will be automatically added to the top and after this we can directly access uh, text ID uh, from the list. We can access the text and for example uh, assign text to new value. So that's uh, pretty simple, and at the same time, this is an old-fashioned method. Uh, it's not uh, recommended by uh, Android Studio developers team uh, because this method is not efficient in terms of uh, accessing elements and runtime, especially when you have a lot of elements. It could be like uh, time-consuming. Uh, so today we have two more methods to consider. And one of the methods that you see in my videos is uh, the method using synthetic property, a Kotlin extension. I will uh, name it uh, like method 2, using synthetic property. So for synthetic property, uh, we have access to text ID directly. Uh, as you see in my video, I just type in uh, text ID directly and I have access. But uh, before to check in method Method two, we have to uh, comment method one because they will be contradicting to each other. So you see that method two does not work uh, using synthetic property is not possible. The reason is because Android uh, Studio deprecated one of the Android plugins. So if you go to build Gradle and find plugins on the top, and you have uh, two plugins, Android ID com Android application and Kotlin Android. If you add one more plugin, which is Kotlin Android extensions, and press sync now, uh, you will get the message that uh, warning Android Kotlin Android extension grade plugin is deprecated. Uh, so in this case, uh, this plugin is not recommended. It doesn't mean like you cannot use it right now. It still will be working. But this uh, practice is not encouraged by uh, Android Google right now, right? So in this case, uh, I can show you how, how to use this. So you see, like once we add this uh, plugin, we receive invitation to uh, press Alt Enter to uh, import synthetic property. So I'll do this right now. And by Alt Enter, this line was added. Uh, this line was added to your code, and then after this, you can uh, change uh, text from synthetic property very easy. So that's uh, that. Let's assign another new value. So that was method number two. Um, so unfortunately, this number two is uh, deprecated recently uh, and will be eliminated very soon from Android uh, Studio. I guess they make announcement until 2021 uh, September. This method will be working and after this uh, the method will be eliminated from, um, from developing. So if you are watching my recent videos for Android Kotlin development, you can do this just simply updating your build Gradle then press Alt Enter to get this line on the top. You don't need even to type it because it's very hard to type this uh, synthetic, synthetic property class. And then using uh, direct access to ID, you can uh, modify existing text. 
Unfortunately, Android developers team decided that this is not the best practice. And as I said, uh, this uh, practice will be eliminated very soon. Uh, apparently, the reason is because uh, in this case, layout, uh, different layouts exposed to different activities. And that's maybe a potential uh, safety, safety uh, issue in the future. One of the, one of the concerns for the Android developers team. And they introduce uh, the, the most recent one, uh, method three, and has a name uh, view Biden. So let's get started with method three view binding. Uh, first of all, uh, I will delete uh, method two from uh, build gradle. So I'm going back to delete uh, Kotlin extension, which is uh, deprecated already. After this, I go back and delete also synthetic property, which will be also not working after this. And then obviously this, this line will be uh, uh, error after this. So after this, uh, we would like to use view binding as the build feature for, for this project. So for this purpose, we go back to uh, build gradle and after uh, in the same in the same build gradle on the module level in android section uh, in my case uh, after kotlin kotlin options but could be anywhere the most important you have to be in this android section so not in plugin section so we will write here um, the following so we'll write build features And inside build features, we'll be introducing view binding true. Okay. Uh, so make sure they didn't uh, do any typos and sync now. So it looks like uh, build was successful. Right now we can go back to main activity and before going to type in method three, we have to uh, declare binding variable or binding object in our class. And this should be done on the uh, class uh, class level before on create. So we'll write private late init. So late init means uh, this variable will be uh, initialized later in the code. And variable will be have name binding. And you see what is interesting trick. So when I type binding variable, I will have a, a Android Studio prompt activity main binding. That's required to pick it up. And after you uh, did this, uh, this job, you will see the important statement come up on the top, which has your uh, project. Uh, package name and new uh, new class activity main binding. You may be curious, what is activity main binding coming from? So if you uh, remember about your uh, activity layout, activity main, this is the same name um, of XML file, but using uh, elephant notations, we convert that activity lowercase to activity uh, the first letter with uppercase. Uh, ignore underscore with main, uh, the first letter is also capitalized, and word binding added to, uh, to this abbreviation. So after this, we need to use view binding variable after on create. We have to initialize binding object. Uh, so we will write binding. Uh, then we use uh, method activity main binding and choose inflate. So inflate method will be basically inflating a layout as required uh, using a layout inflator. Yeah, so we, we will just can make automatic uh, inflator layout from the current context. And finally, we need to change set content view uh, which was our layout activity main. Right now, we will be collecting to, uh, to binding. 
dot root. So once you're done with this binding and connecting changing set content view, we can use uh, here the binding object and you can access directly text ID in the same way as we did for method two. But in this case, it's just only one uh, thing required. We need to use a uh, binding object. And it will be a uh, data binding access. So binding dot text ID dot text data binding access. Uh, so let's try this one. All right, so it was a method three, how to use uh, data binding, uh, I'm sorry, how to use view binding to access uh, ID from the uh, resource property uh, from a layout file. So I would personally recommend uh, using uh, the most recent one, uh, using view binding. Even my preference is using synthetic property number two, as you see in my videos. Uh, personally, uh, I would say this method is much more convenient than method 3. Uh, but uh, method 2 is not the best practice for today. Uh, so Android Studio is uh, suggesting uh, using a view binding uh, in the project if it's possible. Okay, so it was a video how to uh, access IDs of your different UI elements from layout using uh, find view by ID using synthetic property and using view binding. If you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. Thanks a lot.